On today's episode, I'll show you how I made this. A power supply cover with a switch, fuse, and three-prong plug. And I'll explain how I calculated the fuse size and how I put this together. All from the Makerfront 3D printer. I'll show you all of it on today's Filament Friday. Filament Friday is brought to you by the generous donations of my Patreon supporters. Thank you. If you want to help keep Filament Friday going, please consider donating a dollar a month through Patreon. This is the module I'm going to use in this project. It's got a three-pronged plug, an integrated fuse, and an on-off switch. I'll put a link in the description below where you can buy one of these, but now I just needed to find a 3D print that this thing could snap into. And I found this one. It's from user TCM0116. Now I had designed my own case, but this one was better because it had holes lined up exactly where my power supply were. The only problem is it's a single print and it was too big for my printer, so I needed to break this up. And here's the two pieces. I actually split this just above where a bolt hole or mounting hole was on the side so I could pinch these together with a bolt and washer. And I'm not sure it was the best idea, um, but it did fit nicely over the power supply. If I did this again, I think I may split it higher up. That way I got a full bolt on the lower half. But this printed really good on my Flashforge Dreamer. I just printed at a rough 0.3 layer height. So now I need to go into the calculations of the current so I can figure out what fuse I'm going to need. So here's the ramp schematic. This is the shield that plugs into the Arduino Mega and controls most of our 3D printers. Sometimes this is built into the board with the Arduino and sometimes it's a separate shield, but the schematic is basically the same. And we've got the thermistors, end stops, heater, stepper drivers, power, and this power is the area I want to focus on. So to determine my fuse, I wanted to see what fusing was in this guy. And there's two lines, two 12 volt lines. One goes to a 12V label, and one goes to a 12V2. If I follow the 12V, that controls all the stepper drivers, also the hot end, and the fan. So all those are controlled by this 12V line, which has a 5 amp poly fuse here. The other one, V2, goes to the FET here that controls the, hot, uh, the heated bed. So this is V2, that's on a line all itself. And that's got an 11 amp poly fuse. Now what are poly fuses? They're basically resistors that change resistance with temperature. And these are PTC, that the positive temperature coefficient, the resistance goes up as they get hot, which is kind of opposite of what a thermistor does. A thermistor uh, is a neg negative temperature coefficient, or an NTC. Its resistance goes down as it heats up. And the thermistors give a variable resistance, and that's what the Arduino reads to determine whether to turn these transistors on or off to control the temperature of the uh, hot end or the heated bed. So these being PTC, what happens is, is they heat up at a certain current equal to that heat they have been calculated. They go to real high resistance or almost an open circuit. So that's why they're resettable fuses. And then once they cool down, they go back to low resistance and they're, they've reset themselves. So combined, 11 amps and 15 and 5 amps, that's 16 total amps this guy, worst case, can draw because then these kick in. So I don't want to go worst case because I want to trip before they go, but I want to supply enough current that any surges for the heated bed or anything, that it has enough current. So anything less than 16 would probably be good, but I don't want to go too low because then the fuse is going to probably trip at times. So I'm going to go just below these combined at 15 amps. That way, each individual circuit has plenty of current to work, and if one of them gets a short, the fuse can do its job, the, the resettable fuse. But if both of them have a problem, there's some short, major short, then my fuse will trip. So our power supply, or brick as people like to call it, is two parts. There's an AC side and a DC side. And what we have coming in on the AC side, of course, is 110 volts. And on the output, we have 12 volts. Now, I did the calculations, and I know we want to stick around 15 amps. So if I multiply those out, I get 180 watts of power. But AC to DC is not perfectly efficient. A good number to go with is about 80%. Because about 20% will be lost through heat and other things. So if I take that 180, divide it by 0.8 for the 80%, that's 
that says it's 225 watts on this side to equal 180 on that side. If I divide the 110 into 225, that's going to give me 2.045 amps. So to, in order to deliver 15 amps over here at 80% efficiency, I need 2.45 amps coming in. And that's what's going to help me determine my fuse. So I know I want to go bigger than this. So perfect would probably be 3 amp fuse. But there may be times where this is starting up. There could be some surge current. All kinds of things that draw a little bit more. Plus what's going on inside this guy. So I'm going to go a safe bet. And I'm just going to go a 6 amp fuse. That way I'm still protected for direct shorts on this side. But... I'm far more protected than nothing because the household plug that this plugs into is a 15 amp fuse. So that's a lot of difference before this thing will actually trip the household fuse. So putting a 6 amp fuse here inside the plug module is going to make this a lot safer. So now it's time to wire this guy up. And I wanted to follow the proper color code but I didn't have any white wire. So what I did was take a red wire, put some white heat shrink over it, and then turned it into a white wire. There's four wires that I need to install. The first one is a short little wire that goes from the on-off switch over to the fuse terminal. And I put some shrink tubing on it so I can cover up these terminals when it's all soldered and done. So that wire was installed in place. The heat shrink slid down. And the next was the hot wire, or the black wire, would go to the proper prong. And this is the one that is actually switched. This hot line is switched, so that went to the other side of the switch. The last two are the green wire and the white wire, the neutral and the ground. And these, I did the same thing, just soldered them to the proper terminal, and then brought the heat shrink down over the top of them. Let me give you a top view of the connections here so you understand. One of the terminals, the hot, goes right into the fuse automatically, and then my red wire connects it to the switch, and then the black wire to the switch. Then I just have the white neutral and the green ground. I use my heat gun to shrink the tubing around the terminals and the wires. This makes them stronger and insulated. Then I got out the 6 amp fuse and I'm ready to install that. There's a little shelf that slides out, the fuse goes in it, and then when you push this in it snaps into the terminals. There's actually a little drawer in here for a separate fuse if you want to use that. So you just push it and it snaps in place. Now I need to install this into the 3D print. So you just slide the wires through, push it in until it snaps, and that was good. Now I needed to make the connections. So the white wire went to the neutral, the black wire goes to live, and the green wire goes to ground. So that was done. I bent the wire so they would flex, and then I test fit this into place. Everything was looking good, so now I needed to install the DC side of the connections. This is the harness that actually goes over to the Arduino and ramps module. So there's two red wires, like I talked about in the schematics, and two black, but they're, you know, they're all connected here. And then I group those together. There's a notch or a little half hole on the side of this thing that guide those wires. And then I put the bracket in place and tightened it with a ratchet. So this thing's ready to install now. There's three screws that actually hold it to the maker front frame. There's three holes in the side, so I just pop the screw through and then screw it into the power supply itself. And once I got them all hand tightened, then I tighten them all the way. So the only thing left to do is connect the wire over from the power supply to the ramps shield. And then I added this plastic sheathing over that wire to give it a little more protection. And it's done. So now I just need to plug in the three-prong plug, flip this thing on, and see if it works. So I plugged in the three-prong plug, flipped the switch, turned it so I could see the display, and there it was. I could turn it on and turn it off. I wish I had a big enough printer to print the whole box. Splitting in two didn't quite work out the way I'd hoped. It's not bad, but one piece would have been better. And I left the back of it open. In a previous video, I showed a cover that completely covered the power supply. And a commenter made a good point. If the earth ground is grounding the case of the power supply, the metal case, then when I screw that case to this metal frame machine, then it'll ground this whole machine. So this whole machine will be connected to earth ground. So that was a good point. So that's why I didn't put it back on it and screwed it directly to it. I post a new video every Friday. So if you want to check out some of my other videos, just click on the videos over here. 
And if you want to help support the channel and keep it going, a dollar a month is all I ask. Click on the Patreon logo over here. Sometimes I'll squeeze in extra videos, and don't miss those by subscribing, clicking on my uh, logo down there. So that's it for this week. I'll see you next time on Filament Friday.